So there's quite a few challenges ahead that could really impact uh, growth going forward. And notwithstanding that, you need to have improvements in domestic confidence as well, which has been not so strong. So there's a few challenges ahead. But at least here and there, it looks like things are not as bad as they were last year. So I would say that probably those growth numbers that we've seen, um, they're maybe not so far off the, the, the ballpark. But the, the thing is that they will continue to, to soften over the course of this year and probably next year as well, that the growth numbers will come out a little bit weaker than what the headlines at the moment are suggesting. The growth path is for mm. moderation and growth. And that's for the economy, but also for the earnings that are listed in these companies. So we need some stimulus to put it on that uh, more concrete path that you were referring to earlier on. Let's strip out the econ data, right? And let's just talk specifically about, you know, equity broadly, right? We, we've had this national team buying support. We've had all of these market reforms. We've had even, you know, the, the buybacks from some of the firms coming through as well, the, the redistribution of capital allocation, all of these um, strategies. But we continue to see them failing when it comes to the test of having sustainable gains coming through. So, so what's it going to take? Is it, and I know I'll put it to the side, but is it people need to see the, the economic data improve? Do they need to see, you know, some earnings stability? What is it to, to get that flow coming back in? Yeah, well, if you say uh, what is it that brings that flow back in, I mean, we, we do need to understand that some of the flow that has left will not return. We, we know that certain pension funds in the US, for example, are publicly stated uh, we're going to cut down their exposure to China. It's probably one of the reasons why we've seen so much weakness uh, last year. But yeah, what brings that confidence back? Now, um, th there's a couple of things I, I, I would look at. Um, we've seen some policy making last year that, that the market really struggled with to digest in terms of what that it meant. If we, if we see an absence of that, that would be a good thing already. We've now got the earnings numbers coming through. Um, no, the, the expect there are some revisions taking place for 2024. But if we see that moderate and uh, get a earnings on, on a sort of firmer foot and also the forecast on the firmer foot, that would, uh, that would help. And notwithstanding that, we do see a shift in flows in the market. So you're right. At the beginning of the year, the, the government uh, stepped in. It was to talk about that national team and these sort of things. Then we saw the flow of... Um, of, of, of uh, uh, particular Chinese hedge funds actually coming back into the uh, into the onshore market, but more recently through the northbound channel, we've actually seen also low only funds, international funds, increasing their exposure. The, the issue has been that while they've done so, those markets on. onshore markets rallied a bit higher, and therefore they haven't Herald, really. Herald, hold on. The are we sure that northbound flow? Are we sure? Are we sure that northbound flow isn't just that re, those repatriated funds coming through from the the China SOEs overseas holdings that that comes in mm -hmm. through the northbound channel? Because I, I would agree in terms of the southbound, we've seen stellar almost every day. You're seeing that money coming in, but is it really indicative? And this is the the, the question: Is it really indicative of, of foreign investors coming back, or is it just their money? Yeah. The, the no, no. China I, money I, I, I think there isn't. No, there, I think there's an indication. So you're right. Uh, the northbound flow is a big tunnel, right? And all sorts of money is flowing through that, including, for example, the repatriation. But um, we look at thousands, if not tens of thousands of funds every month to see what their position is across the region, in particular in China. 92% of them have increased their weight in China last month. So that's that's a big number. That means a lot of people, but it's just that they haven't bought a hell of a lot yet. But 92% of all of these thousands of funds have increased the actual exposure that they have to China. So I think there is money coming through the northbound that is coming from foreign investors. It's just not really a lot yet. So we are in the very early stages of maybe that sentiment in improving. And that means that sentiment is not concrete. It's fragile. And if anything goes wrong, there could be higher bond yields. Uh, the stuff that you were talking about earlier on uh, um, uh, in the U.S. in the Treasury market, there could be a weakness in growth. There could be policy announcements that the market seems difficult to digest. There could be anything else could that yeah could put that fragile sort of confidence on uh, on a, on an even more fragile sort of path.